Are we looking at Hollywood's future heavy hitter? On the next Good Evening, in 1981, the film Taps tapped an incredible pool of talent. Now those same filmmakers feel they've scored again in school ties. Why do they see big box office in this unassuming Seattle star? Then, as his unconscious father lay slumped in the pilot seat, this camas teenager took his family's lives in his hands, relived the dramatic moments when this boy became a man. Monday at 6.30 on Channel 8. This is definitely the key number in this commercial. 7.75. Because from now till Monday at Damer O. Beaverton Ford, you can get... <laughs> for up to 73 months. That's one of our lowest rates in decades. Plus, you keep all the factory rebates. At Damero, you'll choose from over 1,500 vehicles, including the Northwest's largest inventory of new Fords, all with 7.75%. Point... 7.75% financing only till Monday at Damero Beaverton Ford. KGW-TV Portland. From all over the Northwest, when news happens, you'll see it on News 8. And now... News 8 at 11. Good evening, everyone. After an intensive two-day manhunt, the man accused of murdering an Oregon State police officer is finally in custody. 28-year-old Francisco Manzo Hernandez was arrested late this afternoon in a Klamath Falls field. Now, Hernandez was being sought in the shooting. The suspect was captured in a barn behind a house, apparently the result of a tip. Police say Hernandez was a passenger in the car that Claude Felder had stopped early Wednesday morning before Claude Felder was found dead, slumped behind the wheel of his car. Authorities theorize that Manzo Hernandez was one of three men who may have been riding in the back of Claude Felder's car. The other two are also in custody but have not been charged in connection with the killing. A witness to the capture this afternoon said about 30 police officers surrounded the barn. A shot was fired. And the next thing, the uh, person knew the police officers were happily jumping in the air like it was a Super Bowl. The Klamath County District Attorney says he expects to seek the death penalty. Tracy? If you're headed to the beach this weekend, be warned, shellfish along the Oregon and Washington coast is contaminated with a deadly toxin, a toxin that could kill you. Well, the levels that we're seeing now are the highest levels that we have ever seen on the, along the Oregon coast. It's called a red tide, a natural phenomenon caused by blooming algae, and it's so bad that late Wednesday, the Oregon Health Division closed all harvesting is off limits. Today, Washington followed suit. The toxin causes paralytic shellfish poisoning. It is serious if you, if these, especially at these levels, people consuming these uh, products really do run a substantial risk uh, to their health, uh, potentially, uh, 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 potentially death. While sports fishermen should be concerned, the health division says the consumer should not. All the shellfish we can buy has already been tested. The consumer can feel perfectly safe that anything they have in a restaurant or in a market, that is fine. It's not unusual to see a red tide this time of year in the Northwest. What is unusual is the high concentration of the toxin. The health division says it becomes unsafe at 80 parts per million. Well, some of the shellfish recently tested showed levels at 4,000. Like it or not, thousands of Bo Boeing employees in Oregon, Washington, and Kansas voted to approve a new contract today. The three-year deal averts a strike by the machinists. The contract includes a bonus the first year and will increase wages from about $17 an hour to $20 an hour by 1995. Even though the contract passed by 72% here, there were plenty of complaints from Portland Union members. The company's made record profits over the years. Uh, they give their upper management all kinds of pay raises, uh, all kinds of benefits and they try to take away from us. With what they have proposed, it's gonna cost my family $100 a month for medical care. And uh, the general wage increase in the lump sum just doesn't make up for that. The Boeing Machinist Union in Portland has almost 1,600 workers. The jobless rate dropped slightly last month, but Overall, however, there were 57,000 fewer people working. The unemployment rate dropped not because there were more jobs, but because there were fewer people in the labor force and more than a million people who have been giving up looking for work are not included in the unemployment rate. Another six million who would like to work full-time are working part-time right now. 
Everyone agrees the deciding factor in this year's presidential election will be jobs. Today's unemployment figures may help President Bush in closely contested states like Ohio and North Carolina, but it could hurt him in critical states like New Jersey, Michigan, and Florida. And even Texas, where the unemployment rate jumped up nearly a point. As expected, the presidential candidates have different interpretations. But I think this is encouraging news. Uh, and certainly goes against the political grain where some are saying everything's getting worse. It isn't. How much evidence do we need? Personal income, leading indicators, housing starts, retail sales, industrial production, all down. Today's unemployment figures will be the last before Election Day. The state of the American economy, of course, will get a thorough working over in those presidential debates, which, hey, are now scheduled actually to begin a week from Sunday. The Bush and Clinton campaigns have agreed to debate on October 11th, 13th, 15th, and 19th. One of those will be a vice presidential debate. No word yet if Ross Perot will be included. And Perot may be back in the race, but some of his former organizers here in Oregon are not jumping on the bandwagon. The group, led by Perot's former Oregon strategy chairman, endorsed Bill Clinton at a news conference in Portland today. Apparently, many are still stinging from Perot's withdrawal last July. Hey, you know, I learned in high school, you know, you stand me up once and that's all. He didn't write, he didn't phone, he didn't send flowers. Uh, uh, he stood me up uh, and he stood up the American people. Others making the switch include Perot's campaign coordinators from Klamath Falls, Gresham, Lake Oswego, and Washington, Benton, and Yamhill counties. Pete? President Bush prevailed today in Congress. The House failed to override his veto of the so-called gag rule banning abortion counseling in federally aided family planning clinics. Opponents of the rules say it discriminates against poor women who need and use the clinics. Not only does this regulation restrict free speech, regardless of what the opponents claim, it widens the growing gap between rich and poor. But supporters of the gag rule say the only relevant issue is abortion. All you have to do is look in the yellow pages and you can find abortion clinics all over. But abortion is killing it offends a lot of people who don't want their tax dollars spent for it. The House fell 10 votes short of the two-thirds needed to overturn the president's veto. It was Mr. Bush's 35th consecutive sustained veto. Tracy? State Representative Tom Bryan says he's relieved a state referee cleared him of charges that he used his office for personal gain. Bryan was under investigation by the State Ethics Commission in connection with a business letter he allegedly wrote to a Japanese company on legislative stationery. Brian told News 8's Pat Doris tonight that the letter was a forgery and that the state referee agrees. The findings of fact in the report show that uh, I did not sign the letter, that my signature was in fact forged to it. Uh, it was a product of an overlay by using copiers. Brian refused to speculate on who forged that letter. He said he and his family can now get on with their lives without the investigation hanging over them. You know, I'm very relieved. Um, it's been a long road for the, my family and I, and um, kind of a, a, a new sense that, that the system will, in fact, work, no matter how frustrated uh, you get during the way. I mean, it was very frustrated and scary at times, because you're taking on the state of Oregon, the attorney general's office, a state agency. People kind of automatically assume, well, gee, the, the state agency, you know, they must be right. But Tom Bryan says they were wrong and that the referee's ruling proves that the Ethics Commission can approve the ruling, modify it, or reject it. It's important teenagers have found a place where they can have fun and avoid breaking the curfew, but not every parent's happy about it. We'll have the story next on News 8. Also, a dispute over a parking space ends with a jail sentence. And later in sports, highlights of a soggy but exciting night in prep football. This edition of News 8 is closed captioned through a generous grant from Smith's Home Furnishings because nobody cares like Smith's. A former CIA agent exposes an alleged CIA plot as he confesses, I helped kill JFK. Monday night at 7. If you've been waiting for the best prices on the best names in home electronics, don't miss the fall sale at Fred Meyer. Right now, save on all Kodak Fun Saver cameras, including standard, flash, panoramic, and waterproof. You'll also save on all TDK audio and videotape. The T120 videotape 4-pack is $9.97. And all Olympus cameras are on sale, like the Olympus Stylus, now just $119.
The Fall Home Electronics Sale. The right brands at unbeatable prices. You'll find it at Fred Meyer. Families are big, big business. So everybody says theirs is a family car. All right, tell me it has 90 cubic feet of passenger space like a Subaru Legacy. Enough room for five so you're close but not touching me close. Tell me it has a quiet, horizontally opposed engine like the Legacy. There's enough noise already with a family. Tell me it offers all-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes like a Legacy. A family car is for my family, not some other family I don't care so much about. Tell me I have the money. I want to know what to drive. Save up to $3,000 at your local Subaru dealer today. You need your brakes fixed, but your car dealer couldn't take you today? What's stopping you? Midas can fix your brakes right the same day you bring in your car. You need brakes, but you're worried about cost? What's stopping you? Right now, get 25% off Midas quality brake shoes or pads. You need brakes? What's stopping you? 25% off Midas brake shoes or pads. Guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Your brakes can't wait. Midas, today. A 73-year-old North Portland man was sentenced to 10 years in prison today for shooting his next-door neighbor and her daughter. Louis Evers got an ar in an argument with his neighbor, and when the argument was over, Victoria Rayburn and her 2-year-old daughter were shot. Mrs. Rayburn is paralyzed from the waist down as a result of the shooting. The violence was the culmination of years of bickering over a parking space in front of the two homes. Now, Evers broke down in court today when friends told the judge that he was a peaceful man. The assistant district attorney described Evers as a man without remorse for a serious crime. For the second weekend in a row, Portland police are enforcing the city curfew law. But for the mother of a 15-year-old, the law and its enforcement mean nothing. Tonight, Carmen Jeffrey has the story of a mother caught between the curfew and after-hour clubs. On a Friday, the all-age, practically all-night city nightclub on Northwest 13th draws the usual crowd. The club serves no alcohol, so teens can get in and stay in until it closes. But as long as those 18 and under are inside, they're not in violation of a Friday midnight curfew, even at 4 a.m. And parent Susan Garand, the mother of a 15-year-old, can hardly believe it. What do the police think happens when the kids leave the city nightclub? Where do the kids go at 2.30 in the morning if nobody's picking them up? As they have in the past, police are in the midst of a curfew crackdown to keep teens off the streets. They like the underage clubs. There are several in Portland. But unless police catch them going to and from or hanging out, the curfew doesn't apply. We're not going to go into these clubs and just zone in on the youth and, and pull them out and arrest them for curfew violations. No, we aren't going to do that. We're actually helping the city of Portland and parents, concerned parents. We're giving young people a viable, safe, well-regulated, social recreational outlet. 15-year-old Stacy Lenoy shares the same I opinion. I don't believe that it's the club's fault that we don't go straight home. That's our responsibility. But Stacy still stays out late. The clubs allow her in. And as long as she stays out of sight of police, she's not breaking curfew. Her mother says parents have nowhere to turn. We cannot reprimand our kids. We can't say stay in the house. It's mental cruelty. If we spank them, it's physical cruelty. And if we let them go and something happens, who does it come back to? Us. We're the bad parents. Carmen we Jeffrey, News 8. The city nightclub owner says that if a parent wants to exclude their child from his club, they can, and he will not allow the teen to enter. If you traveled on southbound Interstate 405 tonight, you were probably pretty frustrated. Traffic was backed up for miles after a distraught man threatened to jump from a sign into oncoming traffic. Police say the standoff ended peacefully, but the freeway was partially closed on the Fremont Bridge for about three hours. Police say the man was apparently out on a pass from the psychiatric unit at Oregon Health Sciences University Hospital. A drying trend is on the way for the rest of the weekend. Joe Santilli has the forecast coming up. And still to come on News 8 at 11, the largest airplane ever built makes its way to Oregon inch by inch. Rodney King met Officer Ted Braceno on this fateful night in Los Angeles. Now, Inside Edition examines the man behind the badge. Ted Braceno faces federal charges in the Rodney King case. Now, this woman says Briseno attacked her when she was his wife. He kept hitting me and hitting me in my face. 
The mother of this cop's children shares her terrible story. He said, I gotta get off of you before I kill you. Don't miss the next Inside Edition. Monday night at 7.30. The Safeway Stock Up Sale continues. It's the second big week of savings. Stock up on all your favorite Safeway brands. They're the same high quality as national brands, but cost you less. Save on the familiar name. 1% or 2% low fat or non fat, just $1.58 for the first gallon. And family pack bone in ribeye steak, $2.89 a pound. For premium quality brands at lower prices, nobody does it better than Safeway. As a lifelong Republican, I've watched Bob Packwood. He is a master politician. But now I wonder if he has a conscience. Bob Packwood is attacking Los Coin on speaking fees. But Packwood has collected over $700,000 while missing at least 27 votes. For Bob Packwood, the truth is just something to twist. We need answers, not games. We deserve better. There'll be plenty of beachcombers on the Oregon coast tomorrow, but they'll be looking for trash, not treasures. The ninth annual beach cleanup starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. at 24 sites from Astoria to Brookings. And if you think the beaches look pretty clean already, think again. Last year, volunteers picked up 35,000 pounds of garbage, everything from cigarette butts and birds mistake as food, to deadly fishing line and plastic rings. Organizers say more people turn out each year to take care of the beaches it's been so successful that other states have now adopted the idea. And what a great idea it is. Will those be yeah. soggy little volunteers tomorrow? <laughs> Maybe early Saturday morning there will be some drizzle and some fog along the coastline. But as the day moves along and as the weekend moves along, it will dry out quite nicely along the coastline and, uh, for that matter, most of the western part of the state. More on that in a second. First of all, here are the current readings. Drizzle, 56 degrees. The humidity, 100%. West wind at 7 miles per hour, the barometer 29.95, it's holding steady. The high today, 57, the low overnight, 55, not much of a range in temperatures as you can see, but more importantly, 32 one hundredths of an inch of rain today since midnight last night, 45 one hundredths for the month. We're on the plus side, that's good news, but a long way to go for the yearly deficit, the freezing level at 10,200 feet. Here's the radar, and still an area of very light rain and drizzle throughout the metro area. It is slowly shifting to the east and will end overnight tonight into tomorrow morning, but a nice weekend on the way. And as you take a look at the satellite loop, an upper low is zipping right along the California-Oregon border right now, right about there, and it's spinning a lot of moisture in off the Pacific Ocean and then back up into the northern part of the state, and that's what we're experiencing right now. This will slowly, again, move to the east and get out of our hair. It's nice to have the rain, but it looks like we're going to have a nice weekend. Here is the upper air pattern right now. There is that upper feature with a bit of the jet zipping right around it. By Monday, that will be consumed by the main jet. A ridge will be starting to build on in. It looks like the latter part of the weekend and the beginning of next week are going to be rather nice. Around the northwest tonight, this is the way it shapes up. Lots of surface low pressure, thus the clouds. High pressures to the west will begin to dry us out somewhat. Now, precipitation totals around the area up to 5 o'clock this afternoon. Three quarters of an inch of rain down in Estacada. A lot of lifting in those showers up in the hills there. Dropped a lot of rain. Ending at 5 o'clock this afternoon. But nevertheless, it is nice to see the rainfall and we'll take it. 60 the high in Tillamook today. 58 down in the state capitol. Redmond 53. 74 though in Pendleton. 76 in Lagrand, John Day at 67 degrees. 77 in Ontario. They had some sunshine in the eastern part of the state today. Thus the high readings. Mostly dry across most of the nation. The rain you know about here in the northwest. Some more showers and thunder showers down through Florida and a few showers lingering still in the northern part of Maine. Highs around the nation today, 71 in Boston, Massachusetts. Same thing in Washington, D.C. Miami, 84 degrees. Louisville had 77. Rapid City, South Dakota hit 90 degrees. That's a record high. 85 for Denver, 102 in Phoenix, 72 for Los Angeles, 71 up in San Francisco, Fairbanks, 
34, Anchorage 42. No advisories up along the coastline. Look for north northwest winds at 10 to 20 knots for the rest of tonight. Forecast tomorrow, not too bad west side. Some morning fog, maybe some drizzle in most of the western part of the state, then some partial clearing, still some showers from the Cascades eastward, some thunder showers possibility down in the southeastern section of the state. Newport 65 tomorrow, 65 over in Ontario, Bend 60 degrees, and Pendleton 64. Here's the forecast now, it looks like this. For tonight, light rain should end overnight, the low 54, and then tomorrow, Saturday, partly sunny skies. After some morning clouds and some fog, maybe some drizzle, 67. The five-day forecast is real nice right through Wednesday, warming up just a bit. And now, with the power vested in me <laughs> by the Lawn Bowling Association of Harney County, wow. I hereby declare it the weekend. Is lawn bowling back there? Oh, it's big over there. Yeah, yeah. Harney County. Yeah. All right. You've heard of the Spruce Goose. Remember the because spruce goose? Season. Okay. Well, it's on its way to Oregon, and we'll show you about that next. And hunting season begins with some pretty high expectations. your kitchen during the Housewares Festival at True Value. Get the latest appliances at the greatest prices. Whip it up with the Braun Hand Blender, just $17.77. And the Daisy Pickup Pocket Plus, waffles, grilled sandwiches, bacon and eggs, just $39.99. So bring your kitchen into the 90s with all these great appliances. But hurry, the Housewares Festival ends soon. You can do it with True Value. America's first Welcome to Napa, America's most complete source for quality auto parts and accessories, where you'll find friendly, expert advice you can trust, and the finest parts available, always at a fair price. Save on coupon specials like Napa Motor Oil, only 89 cents a quart, Napa's Power 60-month battery, just $38.95 with exchange, and Napa Premium Oil Filters, now two for five dollars after rebate. Plus, get a free Napa hat with qualifying purchase. Flash, read all about it. The new 93 Toyotas are now in at Beaverton Toyota. People are hurrying to Beaverton Toyota to check out the new 93 Corolla. It's roomier, quieter, safer with an all-new design. With 20 sedans and wagons in stock, discover the all-new Corolla at Beaverton Toyota today. And check out their recent delivery of new 93 Camrys with 60 to choose from. Take your pick from one of the most popular import cars today. It's news in the making. The new 93 Toyotas on display now at Beaverton Toyota. Welcome. How did the incredible universe begin? With a big bang, followed by an incredible 160,000 square feet of space, which was filled with all the electronics, computers, appliances, and music in the world. All at incredible low prices. Incredible universe. It's not just a store. It's cosmically fun. Universe's newest concept in spacious travel. If it's not in the universe, it doesn't exist. The largest airplane ever built is heading to Oregon. Crews began loading the Spruce Goose onto an ocean barge this morning in Long Beach, California. The flying boat, built by the legendary Howard Hughes, will become the centerpiece of the new Evergreen Air Venture Museum in McMinnville. Now, for the past 10 years or so, the Spruce Goose has been a tourist attraction down at that Long Beach Pier, and, and now it begins its three-week voyage to McMinnville. Oregon stepped up with Evergreen and the museum to save uh, an American icon, I think truly is valued around the world, and to see that it was not lost, uh, that it would be saved, uh, conserved, maintained, and made available to the public to enjoy. Back in 1947, Howard Hughes and a small engineering crew fired up the Spruce Goose. It lifted 70 feet off the water and flew a mile before making a perfect landing. That was the last time it ever flew. The plane's journey to McMinnville is expected to take about three weeks heading up the Pacific coast, then down the Columbia and Willamette Rivers to its new home in McMinnville. The recent rains arrived just in time for hunting season. It opens tomorrow, rain or shine. Larry Shoup caught up with some folks in the Mount Hood National Forest who expect it to be a very good year. Oregon hunters have waited through a long, hot summer to see this site. Tomorrow, the wait is over. The downtown Fish and Wildlife Office sold 11th hour deer tags all day long. A quarter million hunters will be on the prowl over the next few weeks. The conditions for hunting them have improved considerably over what it was a few weeks ago. 
There were a lot of public lands that were closed and the possibility of even more, but the recent rains have opened up all public lands now. The weather's put a damper on many of the early arrivals, but not John Ruska. The hunter from Boring has high expectations because a lot of bucks survived the mild winter. Well, I think there's more deer out there. Uh, drier or wetter conditions, it's got to help them. The deer are probably moving around more instead of sticking by the water holes. And... The deer will be on the move, and the wet weather should create a better cover for hunters. Conditions are good, and nearly everyone's predicting the best deer season in years. Larry Shoup, News 8. Still to come, auditions for the part of Scarlet, but first the Blue Jays try to wrap up the American League East title. And rain fails to dampen spirits in the field. Eric Johnson has all the prep action next in sports. You can prevent the bars on a crib from becoming the bars of a jail cell. You can make a difference in a child's life. Treat children gently and positively. If you can lend a hand or need parenting support, call 222-5555. Help a child take the first steps to a great start. We have six dealerships right next to each other on McLaughlin Boulevard and a seventh one just six miles north on the same street. It makes it easy for the consumer to compare product. It's possible for the customer in a short period of time see almost every product available in the marketplace. And they can make their buying decision, go home and be done with it. That's why I say, if you don't come see me today, I can't save you any money. When Russ Dealer sold his million piece of original recipe, he had a Colonel Lookalike contest. How better to celebrate the most famous chicken ever cooked? Made with 11 herbs and spices, original recipe can't be duplicated. It's what all the lookalikes ate, including the winner, whose resemblance was uncanny. Get 10 pieces of original recipe, large mashed potatoes with gravy, large coleslaw, and four biscuits, just $9.99 in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. You need your brakes fixed, but you're worried about cost? What's stopping you? Right now, get 25% off Midas brake shoes or pads. Midas, today. See your eye doctor, then see Binion's, and we'll pay for your eye exam. When you buy a complete pair of prescription glasses, we'll rebate up to $35 for your exam. So see you soon at Binion's. Don't wait to get your new glasses. At Binion's, you can use your Sears charge now and make no payments, pay no finance charge, pay nothing for 90 days. Put on your new glasses now and put off paying for 90 days at Binion's. Some say it's pride. Some say it's independence. But most would agree that small business in Oregon is built on opportunity. Ballot Measure 7 threatens the very foundation that Oregon's economy is built on. It could double property taxes on small businesses, giving us one of the highest property taxes in the nation. Can we afford this? Vote no on seven. Stop the tax. Big night in sports. Take it away. We have got some stuff for you, Pete. Just hang on here. The Blue Jays came into action tonight with a magic number of two. Now, what that means is that they could clinch at least a tie for the AL East title with the win tonight. They're at home against the Tigers. First inning, the Jays lit up. Tigers starter Bill Golicks in a big way. First, Roberto Alomar drilled a two-run shot. Then, Candy Maldonado with a two-run shot of his own. 4-1. Jays led right like that. Second inning, Pat Borders hit a monster shot to the upper deck. The Tigers made it close, but the final was Toronto 8, Detroit 7. So all eyes turned to Oakland, where the A's were playing host to the Brewers. The Brewers down to their last gasp. They had to win, or the Jays would win the division. Ninth inning, 2-2 tie. A's have two runners on base. Willie Wilson lifts one to center field. Look at Robin Yount. That's why he's one of the greats. 3-2 Milwaukee final. New York over Boston, Cleveland gets by Baltimore, the Twins were winners, the Angels 6-3 over Texas, Seattle beats Chicago with a shutout. Atlanta swept San Diego in the National League, New York got by Pittsburgh, the Cubbies win, the Giants beat Cincy, the Cards win over Philadelphia, and Houston 6, Los Angeles 1. Now to the prep wars, and this was one of those nights where we saw football the way it was meant to be played, down in the muck and the mire, wet and muddy out there. We start at Newburgh High School where the fourth ranked Glen Coke Crimson Tide was rolling in. This botched punt return for Newburgh would cost them dearly. Nobody knows where the ball is. Who's got it? Where is it? 
It goes off of a Newberg player, and guess what? Glencoe recovers. A few plays later, Gary Stevens will pound in for the touchdown. But get this, Newberg roars back in the second half to win it. 22-21, the Crimson Tide now fall to 3-1. That's a big upset. At Lake Ridge High School, the 10th-ranked Pacers playing host to the Lions of West Lynn. Late in the fourth quarter, 18-10, West Lynn. Let's it fly, and look at that. It is caught by little Jimmy Atkin, goes in for the touchdown. It's 18 to 16. The Pacers would try for two to get the tie. Coin on the keeper is stopped short, does not get in, and that was the final 18 16. Lakeridge's first loss of the season. No score tonight on that Clackamas can be game, but Lake Oswego beaten by Putnam. Oregon City gets by Milwaukee easily. In the Metro League, Beaverton winners, Jesuit big over Forest Grove. Sunset shuts out Hillsboro and Tiger 20-17 over McMinnville. At Barlow High School, the Gresham Gophers paying a friendly visit in the rain. Gresham with an extra point attempt here. Watch this. The high snap. Colby Bennett is in trouble, deep trouble. Pitches to Andy Green. Andy lets it fly to Josh Godwin in the end zone. The extra point is good. The Barlow Bruins were undaunted by that little display. Shannon Johnson on the draw. 20 yards for the TD. 2015 Barlow beats Gresham. The Bruins upset the Gophers to the PIL, where it was Grant against Jefferson on the Civic Stadium turf. Grant up 6-0, punting the ball. The kick is low and short, the kind those guys love to return. Hakeem McAllister takes it at his own 35, goes right, nowhere to go, goes left. Breaks a couple tackles, puts the pedal to the metal, and he has gone 65 yards TD. Jefferson beats Grant 12-8, to the Democrats 2-2 two two now on the season. Earlier in the day, it was the Lincoln Cardinals at Cleveland High. Homecoming festivities. A soggy ride for Marilyn Monroe. Welcome, Marilyn. Lincoln with the ball. Charles Petrie on the pitch here. And watch him. He'll get in for the touchdown, but look at the hit. David Dalt just drills him. Boom. Down he goes. Petrie pops right back up, though. 24-22. Lincoln wins the cards. Pick up a win. Wilson over Benson in the PIL. Madison got by Franklin. Centennial 37-6 over David Douglas. Park Rose beats Central Catholic. Reynolds over Sandy. Other scores, number one ranked Ashland beats North Bend. Marshfield winners big. Roseburg, a tough one against Grants Pass. And Lebanon shuts out eighth ranked South Salem. From the Tri-Valley League, it was a pair of 3A powerhouses going at it. Sixth ranked Sherwood against eighth ranked Hood River. Play of the night, Hood River in punt formation. John Hyatt bobbles the snap, kicks it into his teammate's head. It is recovered by Corey Brown, and big Corey Brown will rumble in for the touchdown. Dan Tabell ran for 190 yards and two touchdowns the final 42 to 12 Sherwood over Hood River the Bowman now 4 and 0 on the season Mario Ellie is one of the newer trailblazers he figures to be a backup guard this guy's been all over the world playing hoops in his last seven years with stints in the NBA CBA and some overseas leagues he's played pro basketball in Ireland Argentina Portugal Ohio New York Philly Oakland and now Portland the guy gets around I must have the most freaking five miles out of any play, I guess, in the NBA. You know, I've been everywhere. He's going to be yeah. good to have around. Never punt it into your teammate's face. It no. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. their bell. Oh, boy. Okay, thanks, Harry. The sequel to one of the most popular movies of all time is finally taking shape. Coming up next, the finalists for the role of Scarlet. Replacing old dated light fixtures with new lighting is a quick, simple, and easy way to update and add a different look to any area of your home. And right now, the biggest lighting sale of the year is happening at Fred Meyer. Exceptional prices, exceptional styles, classic shapes, contemporary forms, create highlights, add drama anywhere you need it. Save now on the style that will showcase your home during the biggest lighting sale of the year. You'll find it at all Fred Meyer Home Improvement Centers. At Sherry's Restaurants, we're always open and cooking for you 24 hours a day. We're the Northwest's finest family food restaurants because we offer a complete menu with something for every member of the family. You can always count on Sherry's for great food at a reasonable price. Right now, get the Golden Griddle Special with French toast, two eggs any style, bacon and sausage for just $3.99. Come in, come in to Sherry's. We're cooking just for you. Sherry's. Lessa Coyne has the worst attendance record of any Oregon congressman. When he does show up for work, he's wrong on the issues. He voted for the largest congressional pay raise in history. And he opposes term limits for Congress. Lessa Coyne, worst attendance record, wrong on the issues. And he wants... 
he voted against the largest pay raise in history, for a balanced budget amendment, and supports term limits. That's the difference. Search for New Scarlet may be over. Casting directors and producers of the soon-to-be-shot sequel to Gone with the Wind have finished auditioning 25 women for the part of Scarlet. 22-year-old Pasquale Caldenhoff from Holland was among those to try out. All right, now give us that look. Same, <laughs> okay, same I'm look. I'm too happy. Yeah. Dressed and made up, Pasquale re draws a striking resemblance to Vivian Lee, the original Scarlet. But she didn't make the finalists. She was one of the ones cut. Of the 25 finalists, only nine were selected for screen tests. There are three American finalists. The rest are from Canada, Ireland, Italy, and Turkey. Isn't that so, the same place as all that guy played basketball? Exactly. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they're not going for big names in this movie, I guess, huh? He Doesn't not, sound like I it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great weekend. Good night. Good night. <laughs>